CBS next Monday. Up next on News 42 at 10, Birmingham finds itself listed among the most dangerous cities in the nation. Here from a family who lost one of their own in this senseless wave of violence. Plus, the new Xbox hits shelves in a matter of hours. But there are concerns about the realistic violence in some of the games. News 42 is next. This is News 42. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sherry Jackson. And I'm David Lamb. A new survey puts Birmingham near the top of a dubious list. According to a survey conducted by Morgan Quitno Press, Birmingham is the 10th most dangerous city in the country. News 42's Kate Mundy joins us now live from downtown Birmingham with more. Well, this is the second year in a row that we've made the top 10. The ranking is based on the number of homicides, rapes, robberies, burglaries, assaults, and auto thefts in 2004. It's a painful distinction that hits home for one local family. Donnie Witten remains deeply scarred from the brutal murder of his 17-year-old daughter. It is really hard. Amanda was murdered three months ago. Her charred remains were discovered in a truck off of Antwerp Avenue. There's been no arrests. It's crime like this that's landed Birmingham near the top of an infamous list, the 10th most dangerous city in the nation. We don't like being on any list. Police Chief Annetta Nunn says while homicides are up for 2005, overall crime is the lowest it's been in 17 years. But that's still no comfort for families like the Wittens. Next year we may get higher, and, uh, and that would be a shame. Uh, it's a shame that anybody has to be in the top ten. This grieving family continues to put out reward posters, all while trying to plan a holiday without their loved one. This week has been especially tough. Ten-year-old Elizabeth is moving into Amanda's old room. The family knows it's time to move on, but they also say their search for answers won't end. Now, the most dangerous cities list also included some other Alabama cities. Montgomery was 78th on the list, and Tuscaloosa was 120th. Reporting live in downtown Birmingham, Kate Mundy, News 42. Okay, thanks, Kate. While Birmingham ranks 10th among the most dangerous cities, here's a look at the others on the top five part of that list. Ranked at number five, Richmond, Virginia. Number four, Flint, Michigan. St. Louis, Missouri at number three. Detroit, Michigan, number two, and the most dangerous city in America, as ranked by Morgan Quintno Press, is Camden, New Jersey. People in a public housing community on Messer Airport Highway were awakened by gunshots early this morning. Investigators say someone shot a man in the stomach. So far, no word on his condition. East Precinct officers are still searching for a suspect in that shooting. Meanwhile, Birmingham police are trying to locate a missing child. 12-year-old Lawrence Parker was last seen today at his home on Red Mill Road in Birmingham. Lawrence is an African-American male. You see him here, 4 feet 4 inches tall with brown eyes, black hair, a light complexion. He was reportedly suffering from asthma. Now, if there's anyone information about his whereabouts, call Family Services at 205-933-4113. Bessemer has also seen its share of violence over the weekend. The crime tape is still on the ground where one person was shot and another person stabbed. Bessemer police said the crimes at 920 First Avenue North happened about 11 last night. Officers took one person into custody for questioning. A 73-year-old Shelby County woman is behind bars charged with assault. Clara Vickery Clark of Inverness is accused of shooting her husband, 51-year-old Cecil Bell, at 205 Heath Drive. That's in Inverness. Um, the Saturday afternoon shooting is believed to have stemmed from a domestic altercation. However, an investigation is ongoing. Clara Clark is being held on $20,000 bond. A man charged with the hit-and-run death of an off-duty police officer was back in court this morning. Doug Layton Jr. faces charges including murder stemming from the April 2005 death of Officer Jason Eckes. Layton is accused of hitting and killing Eckes with a pickup truck on Raleigh Avenue in Homewood. A court record say Layton was running from Birmingham police when he hit the officer who was riding a bicycle. This morning, Judge Laura Petro set a March 13th trial date. Some Tuscaloosa retirees are back home tonight. This is after a fire prompted an evacuation of their retirement building. Firefighters rushed to the Clara Verner Retirement Building just after 6 o'clock on Sunday night after a blaze in a kitchen triggered the fire alarm. The fire was contained to one apartment on the 8th floor, but the excitement forced three neighbors to undergo hospital treatment. Several of the disabled people in that building had to be carried down the stairs by firefighters because the fire forced the elevators to stop operating. 
Two suspects are in custody for a food outlet store robbery in Alexandria that happened last week. 21-year-old Raheem Roberts is in the Etowah County Jail, and 20-year-old Jonathan Crook was arrested this morning and transported to the Calhoun County Jail. Police seized a vehicle they believe was used in the robbery. A new video gaming system is set to be released in just a matter of hours. The Xbox 360 boasts faster playing and better graphics, none of which is lost on players, but some say the effects are not all positive. News 42's Leslie Hendricks joins us now with the number one concern with these lifelike games that they are imitate real life. David, that is exactly right. Some experts say it can easily be defined as an issue of life imitating art. In fact, that was the topic of CSI Miami, which aired on this station earlier tonight. Criminals take to the streets and play out violent video games in real life. And now there's a new gaming system to add to the mix. And they revamped all the graphics, made the games faster, prettier, and the computer has more power to it. That's why many gamers are anxiously awaiting Tuesday's arrival of Xbox 360. I mean, it looks really good. This game's not very good, but it looks really good. I'm definitely going to sit there and play Xbox 360 for months and not do anything else. And that behavior called a flow state is exactly what Dr. Jennings Bryant has been researching for the past few years. In which games become the be all and end all of their existence and so they essentially lose themselves in their identity. Off Research shows that this generally happens to one group more so than others. Usually the middle school kids because they have the dexterity and they have the ability to become the game player so intensively that they actually become very susceptible to the impacts of the games. Dr. Bryant says this can blur the lines between reality and fantasy. Here locally, convicted triple murderer Devin Moore tried to argue that it was learned behavior from a video game that led him to kill three Fayette police officers. That argument was never proven conclusively. However, not all the effects are negative. Dr. Bryant's research found that extensive play can lead to improved problem-solving skills. And just in case you're curious, the new Xbox, three, Xbox 360 will set you back about 300 bucks for the basic version and make that $400 for the one that utilizes wireless technology. David. All right, Leslie, thank you very much. Imagine being a child caught right in the middle of a domestic violence situation. The Birmingham Bar Association hopes to help ease children's emotional pain with bunny gift bags. Bessemer's domestic violence court judge says the bags will be a good distraction for when children have to come to court with their parents. Violence erupted at an Auburn University fraternity house this weekend. Police say someone reportedly screamed, roll tide, outside the Phi Kappa Ta house hours before the Iron Bowl started. A fire broke out when they did. When the scuffle ended, seven Auburn students were injured. Three of them had stab wounds. The suspect is still at large. A Madison County child custody case is causing a stir among justices of the Alabama Supreme Court. A court upheld a lower court decision in 2002 that gave William Mashburn custody of his six-year-old daughter. But Justice Tom Parker, who dissented that ruling, says it restricted the mother's right to teach her child the worship of God. The court says there was evidence the girl was beaten and neglected. U.S. Senator John McCain was in Birmingham this afternoon. He is in town supporting George Wallace Jr.'s candidacy for lieutenant governor in 2006. Wallace is running against Luther Strange and Mo Brooks for the Republican nomination. McCain gave a speech that addressed the war in Iraq and then weighed in on Senator John Murtha's call for the immediate withdrawal of U.S. troops in Iraq. We have to win in Iraq. We cannot fail. The benefits of success are enormous and the consequences of failure are catastrophic. So it has to be dictated by the situation on the ground rather than setting some ar arbitrary time or date for withdrawal. Now, during that speech at the, the club in Birmingham, Senator McCain discussed his experience as a prisoner of war during Vietnam. He later made stops in Mobile and Huntsville. President Bush speaks out about pulling troops out of Iraq. Well, on his way back from Asia, the president talked about Congressman John Murtha, the man who recently proposed that troop withdrawal. He says Murtha has every right to express his opinion, but adds that leaving Iraq now would only encourage terrorists. Meanwhile, Vice President Dick Cheney spoke today in defense of the administration's decision to invade Iraq in the first place. The man accused of opening fire in a shopping mall in Tacoma, Washington, Sunday, pleaded innocent to all charges in court today. 20-year-old Dominique Maldonado has been charged with assault, kidnapping, and firearms possession. The mall where the shooting happened reopened today.
Well, Thanksgiving this Thursday will mark the beginning of the holiday season. And part of the holidays for many people also means giving to charities. But with hurricanes on the Gulf and disasters all across the globe, some worry that the giving spirit might be wearing thin. Organizations like the Salvation Army and smaller local groups like the Jimmy Hill Mission are hoping the needy do not get left out in the cold. People just open their heart to these people, and it was wonderful. But it meant that when they sent that $100 to the Salvation Army for Katrina, they don't have it to send to us now, and we, this is a tremendous need. Right now, we're about $47,000 in the red, but we have an opportunity to make that up between now and year end. Now, the Salvation Army kicked off their Angel Tree and Red Kettle programs today at Colonial Brookwood Village. Meanwhile, Jimmy Hale Mission is in dire need of sponsors as well as other volunteers. Next, Homewood is debating whether to strengthen regulations on sex offenders. Then in our Medical News Minute, serious concerns over a shortage of bird flu vaccine. Then meet the latest recipient of our One Class at a Time $1,000 grant. And it looks like the rain is tapering off. Skies are starting to clear out. What does that mean, sunshine? And then we'll have the forecast coming up. Toyotathon is back. For 27 years, it's been the greatest time to buy the Toyota you're looking for. Quality, selection, value. You'll find it in every car, truck, and SUV we build. Check out the Tundra Double Cab with the XSP Sport Package. It comes with 20-inch alloy wheels, leather seats, and more. Now with available cash back and the XSP Sport Package discount, get $4,000 in total savings on the 06 Tundra Double Cab. The place is Toyotathon. The time is now. Treat yourself today. Toyota, moving forward. Target House is a home for families whose children receive treatment at St. Jude. My son, Louis, at his uh, one-year checkup was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor. A lot of times when they first get here, they can't even tell me what their child's disease is because I haven't even learned it yet. We were very shocked. We were thinking cancer. Target House is a way for kids just to be kids no matter what they're battling. It's definitely a huge source of comfort for our family. I will always be grateful and in debt to everyone here. News 42 is brought to you in part by Alabama Power. Sex offender registration could soon become stricter in Homewood. Tonight, Homewood's Public Safety Committee agreed to have the City Council vote on tougher registration guidelines that will go even further than what the state requires. According to state law, any person living within a 2,000-foot radius of a registered sex offender is notified when the offender moves in. But in Homewood, Police Chief Brooks Weringen says he wants Homewood to step up the registration the process. Reading. We want to be sure that we have a safe community where the families are happy and feel safe and secure, that their children are secure, to provide a safer environment for the people. The Public Safety Committee has held meetings on their proposal, and if it is adopted by the City Council, there are three basic changes. First, community notification will happen every year to residences within 2,000 feet of the sex offender's home. Second, all hotel, motel, and apartment managers will post notices on any sex offenders living in their facilities. Lastly, notification will go to all homes and businesses within that 2,000-foot radius of where a registered sex offender works. The changes are welcome to many people living and working in the city. I don't live in Homewood, but I do shop here often and uh, bring my grandson with me. And um, I'd like to know if there is a sex offender waiting on me at this store. Now, the Public Safety Committee passed that proposed ordinance with a unanimous vote. It goes to the City Council for a vote at next Monday's Council meeting. With the holidays approaching, the Etowah County Sheriff's Department will be putting more deputies out on patrol. District Attorney Jimmy Harp has agreed to provide more funding to the department for added law enforcement and overtime. Harp says the Drug Enforcement Unit will also be more active in the county during the holiday season. A new anti-crime campaign is here just in time for the holidays. Tuscaloosa police want to keep items like these from falling into criminals' hands. Each was taken from a car, and half of those cars were not locked. That's why they are saying lock it or lose it this holiday season. And retailers are happy to push that new slogan. We just hope shoppers will remember to lock up their, especially their big ticket items, you know, in the trunk or somewhere in their automobile that's not visible to anybody passing by where it might. The Lock It or Lose It campaign kicks off later this week. Also keeping an eye in the sky is Tuscaloosa's Shopper Chopper. This afternoon, the U.S. banned poultry from mainland British Columbia because of bird flu. In tonight's Medical News Minute, the government says it will take years before this country 
has enough vaccine for a potential bird flu epidemic. But first up, one school system drops the hammer on black market junk food. Just call them mini entrepreneurs. Candy and chips were banned this year in California schools. Now some savvy students are taking advantage of the demand and supplying goodies to their fellow high schoolers. School officials say there is not much they can do to stop the black market buy and sale of junk food. However, if a student is caught selling the junk food, they do receive detention. A top federal health official believes it will be three to five years before the United States can make enough vaccine to protect the country against a bird flu outbreak. In the meantime, some scientists think the greatest place for early detection is in American zoos. The Department of Agriculture is also watching animals closely for early detection. By pushing yourself a little harder when running or walking, it could really improve your heart health. A 12-year Harvard study found men and women who gradually increased their intensity to run one more hour a week had a 42% reduction in heart disease risk. They also found that walking for an hour at least once a week helped lower the risk of heart disease by 18%. Well, for the next five nights, we are sharing some tips from an expert to save you time, energy, and money during the holidays. Wardrobe consultant Audrey Lindquist says it helps to shop early and don't pay full price for anything. Shop the sales and look for ads in the Sunday paper. You can also ask the store clerks about upcoming sales, which are frequent during the holidays. It's shocking. You know, before it used to be Thanksgiving and then maybe a couple of sales, but now they're constant. You almost feel like if you're buying a cashmere sweater, if you wait long enough, you can probably have it for quite a bit off. More tips tomorrow at 5, and don't forget you can get great deals and valuable coupons online from our CBS 42 Value Club. Just log on to WIAT.com and click on the Value Club link. Well, here's something sure to get Alabama motorists excited about holiday travel. While we are still waiting on regular gas prices to drop to less than $2, the average price is down 18 cents in two weeks. AAA finds the price for regular gas has dropped about 45 cents since last month. Well, every teacher will tell you the ability to read well is an absolute must for students to succeed. And this morning, meteorologist David Sawyer handed a $1,000 check to a teacher who was always looking for better ways to teach reading. We sure did. We were out traveling today as well, and we visited with Jennifer Wade, an elementary school teacher whose extra efforts have earned her this week's One Class at a Time grant. I'm going to put a sentence on the board, and I'm... Jennifer Wade is a first grade teacher at Evangel Classical Christian School in Alabaster. She knows firsthand how important reading is for all her young students. Because reading is just the foundation of everything we do. And that's just, at, at this age, they're so impressionable. And I want them to just have a love for reading. Mrs. Wade says she will use her one class at a time grant to buy new books to create an electronic reading center for all her students. I'll get to, I'll be able to purchase better quality books, uh, nicer books, uh, things, books that will help my students who need a little extra help, and also for the ones who are a little more advanced, to help them kind of enrich uh, the reading program for them, kind of push them a little bit. Congratulations, Mrs. Wade. Your hard work is making our schools better. One Congratulations again, Mrs. Wade. If you're a full-time teacher and would like to apply for a one-class-at-a-time $1,000 grant, log on to our website at WIAT.com or give us a call at 322-4200, extension 205. Now, we're starting another fun contest today. Here's your chance to win a severe weather radio from Storm Team 42. All you have to do is be the 10th caller and tell us the severe weather safety phrase to remember. Here it is. Tonight's tip... A rotating cloud in a thunderstorm is called a funnel cloud. Now, be the 10th caller by dialing either 322-0042 if you live in the Birmingham area or 1-800-509-0042 statewide. Tell our News 42 operator today's safety phrase, a funnel cloud. Now, remember, you must be 18 years of age or older to participate. Good luck to you. Let's talk about our forecast now as we head into Tuesday. It's going to be chilly. We need to bundle up out there, everybody. 36 degrees to begin our day with a partly sunny sky will be a brisk start to the day, to say the least. 46 degrees and chilly even at lunchtime with a high of 50 for the afternoon hours. Northwest winds will be gusting 15 to 25 miles per hour. 
making it feel quite cool with the wind chill factor. Now, overall, we do have the forecast overall improving for outdoor plants. We sure did need the rain today, though. Here is the very latest with 42 Viper to reveal that all is starting to clear on out. The rains have moved on into Georgia and into South Carolina over the last couple of hours. These showers have become heavier now over this part. As you see, the showers and storms moving away from the News 42 viewing area. Let's take a look a little closer at the temperatures. We have 39 Huntsville, 43 Birmingham, a sign that things are certainly going to be cooling off. What brought us the rain today? Well, a big low pressure system. Watch as I put this into motion, a counterclockwise rotation, a fairly impressive storm here. Moving up the eastern seaboard, there was that counterclockwise flow, the low currently poised over the Georgia-South Carolina line. Now, with counterclockwise rotation, that's going to pull in some fairly brisk breezes and colder air for tomorrow. We'll call it breezy and chilly. How strong will those winds be? Again, we go to 42 Viper. Our forecast mode here to show a very strong northwest flow all the way through the day. Winds will be gusting between 15 and 25 miles per hour. As we move on toward the late afternoon hours, the arrows getting shorter illustrates that the winds should start to die down as we head into Tuesday evening, and that will set up for a very cold Tuesday night. Show you more on that in just a moment. Tomorrow's forecast, well, we'll move to Wednesday, too. A big travel day for many. Most of the southeastern United States will be very, very tranquil weather-wise, great for travel purposes. And how about the Thanksgiving forecast? Right now, looking pleasant across central Alabama. But I am watching this frontal system trying to come on down. The timing of this front is going to be critical in terms of how cold it's going to be toward the latter part of the week. Here's our forecast then for the next seven days. Right now, I'm saying the front will not come through on Thanksgiving, giving us a mild 62. Forecast, though, on the big shopping day, Friday, 56, will be a little nippier, as you see in your seven-day forecast. All right, coming up in Inside College Football, we're talking about Auburn and their big win in the Iron Bowl. Yes, and they still have a chance for the SEC title game. We're going to talk about that and more, so stick around. Lullaby and good night. The Target two-day sale starts Friday at 6 a.m. Choose who will tuck you in or wake you up early to shop. Sign up for your wake-up call at Target.com. It's never too early to save. Wake up! The Chevy Red Tag event is here. The price on our tag is the price you pay, not a penny more. Check out the 2006 Chevy Cobalt LS with an EPA estimated 34 highway miles per gallon. Now get an 06 Cobalt LS Cooper sedan with an MSRP of 14490 for the Red Tag event price of 12940 after cash back. The Chevy Red Tag event. See red, save green. See your Alabama Chevy dealers. So how are the digital cameras coming? They're um, I'm using oak for the first time ever. Cuckoo. Look, it's a cuckoo. We haven't actually gotten an image yet on the screen. Well, we drew a picture on the back. You know, sir, this year we can use the easy button to get all the digital cameras we need. Megapixels. Do it. This holiday, get all your digital gifts with the easy button. Staples has a huge selection of brand name digital cameras. Plus, shop early this Friday to get incredible savings throughout the store. Staples, that was easy. Log on to WIAT.com. Hey, Birmingham, Jeopardy is coming to town. Are you ready for the Jeopardy challenge? Well, here's your chance to prove it. The Brain Bus is coming to Birmingham looking for the next contestant to be on America's favorite game show. Meet members of our Clue Crew, play a just-for-fun version of Jeopardy, or take our 10-question pretest, and you could qualify for an invitation to our contestant audition. Come out on Tuesday, November 29th from 5 to 7.30 p.m. and audition at the McWayne Center. See if you have what it takes to be the next Jeopardy contestant. Inside College Football with Brad Radisi and Andrew Zhao. And welcome in, everybody. And, Andrew, you can still call yourself the last quarterback to beat all. Yes, yeah, sadly. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, the guys, we, we, we got more years in our lives, and hopefully this thing will get turned around. Yeah, they've played 70, 80-some years. I think they'll play. Yeah, again. they'll play again. <laughs> all right. Well, folks, let's talk about it. And really, Auburn smothered these guys in the first 
five minutes of the game, they really took it over and won it maybe in the first quarter. Yes, I tell you what, Alabama really lost this game when they lost to LSU because these guys didn't know, didn't know how to take that loss against LSU, and then they didn't know how to bounce back and get ready to play. But I think they should have been ready for the, the way Auburn was going to play. Them. Auburn came out fast and in a hurry to beat Alabama, beat them in the first couple of minutes of the game, and it was really over with. I'll tell you what, a lot of people started getting up after the first quarter. I've seen some. Yeah. Did you get up? No, I didn't get up. <laughs> I had people in front of me tell me to go with them, but I didn't get up. Now, sure, Auburn's offense, they did a big part, but the defense, they should get a big pat on the back. They put Brody down 11 times. Yes, sad to see Brody go down as many times as he did, but you got to give you credit to give the credit to Auburn's defense. I tell you what, these guys came out and played tough. They were after Brody all day, put a lot of pressure on that offensive line to protect him, and Brody couldn't take a three or five step drop all day, so uh, it really takes a lot away from his game because he wants to drop back, get that ball deep to those receivers, and he was unable to do that. And you got to give credit to the defense coordinators and the um, Al um, Auburn's defense. Step up. Let's talk about Alabama. They just, like you said, couldn't get it going. Penalties plus dropped passes plaguing them again. Yes, it all it's, it's did it all year. Ever since Pro Throws left this team, they've all they've been they really felt below standards. And uh, these wide receivers that continue to drop balls, they're very talented, but very young and continue to drop balls. Uh, you got to got to get away from the penalties. Penalties really hurt uh, um, Alabama. Got them in bad situations, second and long, first and long, and you can't play like that. And those, I tell you what, those drives, those drives are, are killed by those drop passes. Let's talk about their defense. They played well in the second half. Oh yeah, but got carved up in that first couple minutes. How does that happen to a great defense? Uh, you, you know what? They came out flat. Like I said, losing to LSU really brought this team out flat. And Auburn really, they knew that at the beginning. They came out more emotionally um, ready to play than Alabama, and the defense got behind early and really couldn't get anything going. But that second half, you got to give your, uh, credit to Alabama's defense. Was capable of coming back, stopping those guys from scoring, and did a great job in the second half, but it was, you know, too late then. All right, how about these coaches? Does this loss take away from Mike Shula's season, and, and what does this win do for Tommy Tuberville? Um, it, the win does a great, a great deed for um, Coach Tuberville because he's really, he's got four in a row now, so he can stick his chest out and be ready and be proud of what he's done. Mike Shula, on the other hand, it really puts a damper on his season. But you can't take away what he's done with this team. He's turned his team around from a team that he didn't have a, a, a spring with him, but was capable of getting this team back to where he needed to have them. He's got this team playing well with, the, with limited talent. Now, you got to think, he's lost his best receiver, lost his lineman, and still they're 9-2. So you got to give credit to Mike Shula and his coaching staff. Okay, let's give some credit to Watson Brown. His UAB team goes out to UTEP. We thought they wouldn't win the game, but hey, they win it one more, and they're in the bowl game. Yes, Dale Hackney continues to play well, and uh, he'll, do, he, he'll do great things, and, and, you know, later on in his career, but Coach Brown got this team out there, played well, was able to confuse UTEP with some of their blitzes and have U UTEP be, have some miscommunications on some uh, pass routes or some hot reads. So that really made UTEP uh, struggle a little bit. UAB got after them, was able to put up points, and uh, you got to you know, tap, give your um, credit to UAB. They've done a great job of trying to get into a bowl. All right, folks, Andrew's going to be back Friday after packing some of that Thanksgiving weight yes, on. Yes, sir. Hopefully not. <laughs> Until then, that's it for sports. All right, coming up, meteorologist David Sawyer's final forecast of the night. And in entertainment news, a musical icon is about to make a rare appearance on the big screen. We'll be right back. Shop Macy's Thanksgiving sale going on now and save on items for holiday travels. And holiday entertaining. Plus, use the sale and clearance shopping pass for extra savings now through Wednesday. Everyone has a gift to give. Macy's. Way to shop. I didn't think I had a problem. Drugs were my best friends. My parents didn't have a clue. I thought I had it under control. But when I almost hit that kid... <sighs> I needed hope, and with mom and dad's help, I found it. I couldn't believe that people actually understood and cared about me. Bradford proved me wrong.
millions of people have joined the Ford family. And now we're making it even easier for you to join. Introducing the Keep It Simple plan. No tags, no hassles. The price you see is the price you'll get. And to help you with your holiday shopping, now through November 27th, drive home a best-selling Ford vehicle and get a $1,000 holiday shopping spree to spend any way you want. Simple, straightforward pricing and a $1,000 shopping spree. But only now through November 27th. Tonight, Dave's all new with George Clooney, plus music from Ashley Simpson. And later this week, don't miss Stupid Human Tricks and an all new Thanksgiving Late Show with Dave's mom. News 42 closed captioning provided in part by Alabama Power. Stars without makeup. Next entertainment tonight. Oh no, Uma. You'll never guess who this is. We uncover what Hollywood beauties really look like. That Rachel Ray and the star she loves. She's cute. <laughs> And now she's teaming up with Oprah Winfrey. Happy holidays! Happy holidays! Plus, only we're with Mark Harmon. And new video from Inside a Blonde Star's Wedding. Only we have it next ET. Entertainment tonight, tomorrow night at 6. Singer David Bowie is making a return to acting. He will play the role of inventor Nikola Tesla in the movie The Prestige. The film centers around rival magicians in early 20th century London. The movie also stars Christian Bale, Hugh Jackman, and Sir Michael Caine. The filming is scheduled to begin in January. The hit musical Rent finally comes to the big screen. The film follows a large group of friends who are struggling to survive in New York East's village. It stars Rosario Dawson, Tay Diggs, and Jesse L. Martin. Rent hits theaters nationwide on November 23rd. Well, we congratulate Roger Garrett of Center, our winner of the Severe Weather Radio in our giveaway. Now, don't despair. If you didn't make it in the call tonight, try again tomorrow. We'll be giving another one away 5 o'clock and 10 o'clock on Tuesday. Make sure you join us for News 42 as we will give away another Severe Weather Radio. So, again, congratulations to Roger Garrett tonight. Here's our forecast into Tuesday, a brisk, chilly day with lots of Say sunshine during the morning, partly sunny during the afternoon, a high of 50, but it's going to feel more like the low 40s when you factor in northwest winds. So do stay bundled up on a breezy and chilly Tuesday. Little milder Wednesday. Thanksgiving right now looks to be pleasant with a high of 62. All right, Dave. Thank you, sir. That's all the time we have. Thank uh, you for joining us. <laughs> the Late Show with Letterman is coming up next. George Clooney is the guest. You just want to say that part. <laughs> You'd go in and start working out. You, you take a shot. News 42 brought you information about steroid use among high school athletes. 59,000 high school seniors have either tried or are currently using the performance enhancer. Plus, why more schools aren't testing their athletes. It's one of the more expensive tests, and with tough times for so many schools, they just cannot afford those tests. Depend Great. on Sherry Jackson and David Lamb for news that is quick, concise, and straight to the point. On News 42, it's about time. your car title into real money then call 1-888-TITLE-MAX real money need money for unexpected bills you have lost your mind to expose